Regina. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we get to interview you. We would love if you could introduce yourself. Thank you so very much, Courtney, for having me on your podcast. Um, tell my story. So um, when I tell my story, I normally go back to 1970, communist Russia, because this is where my story started. I was raised by a single mom. She worked as a secretary. And what it meant that sometimes we didn't have enough money for a bus fare. What she believed in, that I deserved better. So she saved enough when I was 24 to send me to Canada. So I could build a better life for myself. I got my second degree there. I have master's in teaching from Russian computer undergrad. And then I moved to the United States in 2000. And I fell in telecom. I started as a receptionist. And 23 years later, I became an overnight success as the most prominent chief marketing officer in telecom. And because it took me 23 years to get on the, the C-suite as a female, as an immigrant, my mission was to make it easier for people like me to climb the ladder. During COVID, I realized that I, I was reading a lot during COVID. People cooked, people drank. I read. So I think I was reading maybe two, three books a week because that's what helped me cope. And I was mostly reading leadership books, self-development books, self-improvement books. What I realized, majority of those ones were written by men. And the question came to me, came to me. Oh, so those books were great, don't get me wrong. The question was, what do those people know, how it is to be the only one at the leadership table, how to speak or negotiate when you're an immigrant or a female. And that's how my book was born. I love that. I would love if you could tell us more about what your book is about. It's a leadership development book. It's a leadership book. It's a business book. It's a nonfiction book. Um, and it's, a leadership book for the underrepresented in leadership. So if we look at data, 50%, 51% of the population are women, they females. And if we look at the leadership level, there is between, depending on the industry, between 5 and 20%. So why such disparity? So the book was written to help women, people of color, immigrants, learn how to climb the ladder without sacrificing who they are in their authenticity. So I created the laws to success in the workplace that was not designed for you. So the book is structured in three parts. The first part is all about an individual. My belief, and that's the foundation of the book, though the system does exist, if we allowed ourselves to be limited by the system, we're not going to ever succeed. So the first part of the book teaches individuals self-awareness. There's such thing that I... Um, recently learned, learned about uh, as glimmers. I'm not sure if your listeners know what glimmers are. We know about triggers. Triggers are bad experiences from our past. You could probably guess what glimmers are. They're good experiences from our past that can help us become stronger, more resilient. So the first part of the book talks about how to negotiate, how to build self-awareness, how to find your voice and use that voice. 
we all know we cannot do it alone, right? So the second part talks about building your village and how to network and how to build communities. And then the last one talks about though we might have been the first ones at the leadership table and the only ones when we started, we don't want to be the last ones. So it talks about finding purpose and inspiring and helping people like us by extending the leadership table. And that's what the book is all about. Love that. What I know you touched on this, but what inspired you to write the book? The inspiration was that I wanted to make a bigger impact. And mentoring person by person or starting mentorship programs, because I've started a couple, was not enough. It's just not going to put a dent if you try to do it person by person. Data says that it's going to take 150 years for gender pa- parity in leadership. 150 years. That's absolutely crazy. So I wrote the book and then I inspired many of my friends who are executive women in different industries and many of them actually gave me stories for the book. I inspired them to write their own book with that mission to change the face of leadership. So the inspiration was realizing that we needed to do more to change the face of leadership. Love that. When you were writing your book, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your book is for? So the book is for Eugenia, 30, at 30 years of age, when she got her first job as a receptionist after 9-11, when there was no jobs available. It's for her. Because I wish that young lady, smart and with fire in her belly, she knew that it's okay to fight for what you want. It's okay to speak up. It's okay to use your voice. It's okay to negotiate. It's okay to fail because failure is not a failure. It's a learning experience. And that woman, me, at um, me 23 years ago, was extremely lucky because she had sponsors. And sponsors in the corporate world, it's people that believe in you, that will give you opportunities once they see that you deserve them. And my sponsor was the CEO that the chief of staff. I wanted to move into marketing. And I remember like it was yesterday when I asked him if he could let me go and could allow me to transfer into marketing. And when I sent him the book with a nice note, thanking him that 15 years ago he believed that I could do the job in marketing without a marketing degree, he sent me a wonderful text back. He said, I'm going to cry. That decision was not only the right decision for you and me, but it was the right decision for the industries, people, and companies that you've impacted. So to all Eugenas and Courtney's out there, when, when you start your career, ladies, you already have what you need inside of you. And just use your smarts. Use your fire in the belly to succeed. Building your business, growing in the corporate world, starting a podcast, writing a book, be unlimited. Love that. 
How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? I've been writing all my life. Um, in my native language. And then when I moved to Canada, um, I had my own TV show. So I was writing for that. And then when I was, um, when I fell in telecom, I was writing for telecom. So I've written a lot of articles for telecom industry and leadership articles. I express myself with writing. I'm an introvert. So writing allows me to express my ideas. And writing is an outlet as well because I do a lot of journaling. Um, I use the three morning pages from Artist Way book, and I write three morning pages in the morning. So writing to me, I, if I would summarize in three words, it's cre creativity, it's expressing my thoughts, and it's also my safe place. Love that. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? That is a very good question because this is what we were discussing about being a planner. So many people want to write a book. And they probably have absolutely amazing books inside of them. Why people don't write books? Because to write a book, you need to have your bum in the seat writing or typing. You need to be organized. You need to be writing, editing, revising. When I, I wrote this book um, in a year, and when I was editing, working with my editor, I probably, in addition to having a full-time job, I was editing my book and rewriting for 40 hours a week. All, every single weekend I was writing, 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 writing. So my advice, if people would ask, sit down and write, create a schedule, depending on your work schedule, your availability. It's, it's a, you write in the morning, you write in at night, you write on the weekends. Write. So when I write, I block my calendar and I just write. It doesn't matter what comes out. You might not like it. It might, you might judge yourself. But as long as you're writing, you're making progress. And if you write half a page a day, by the end of the year, you're going to have 150 pages. It's a whole book. Love that. What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? As we were recording, there was my dog scratching the door, <laughs> trying to get out. So what I need, I need space that is quiet. And it's just me and my laptop or me and my journal. Some people like writing in the case, Starbucks and other spaces. I need me and my laptop and just writing nice and quiet. So that's how I write. There's no right or wrong way to write. That's what works for me. Love it. What is your favorite writing snack and drink? I'm a water girl. So 30 ounces right here in this big red um, cup and a snack. Hmm. So I am on a special gluten-free diet and um, I can't have like regular snacks or fruit. So what I love to snack on is pine nuts. I don't know what it is about pine nuts, but they crunchy. It's a really nice soft texture and also really unique taste. And it reminds me of Christmas because they pine nuts come from Christmas trees, right? Love that. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? 
So I believe that we gravitate towards books that help us on our life journeys. So when I was growing up, it was all about classic literature, French classic literature, Russian classic literature, English, British, American classic literature. Then um, I started gravitating towards books um, that helped me figure out who I was as a person, self-improvement books, self-development books. And then as I was figuring out my leadership journey, it more I, I was gravitating towards leadership books. So now I'm figuring out what I'm going to read next. I have to be read pile <laughs> on my night table and it's this long because people recommend books and I just go on Amazon and buy them. And then it's just what speaks to me. What do I want to? learn today what i want to connect with today and that's how i pick my books i pick pick my books from the pile based on a feeling love that are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer lennon doyle and Brene brown so um when i was writing my book it was around the time that Glennon Doyle released her own Untamed book. And she wrote in that book that she was writing it like she was Untamed. And it resonated with me. And that's how I wrote my book, as I was unlimited. I was not holding myself back. I was not holding interviews from, I interviewed about 70 people and I put them in my book leaders like me. So I'm grateful to Glennon Doyle because she taught me how to write Unlimited. And then Brainy Brown, her book, I thought it was me, taught me how to be vulnerable in my writing. Because I share stories about my first marriage was very abusive and I share stories about that in my book because it's part it's part of who I am and leaders, especially underrepresented leaders, we need to be okay with all parts of our stories. If we grew up poor, if we grew up on the wrong part of town, where we start, it's not the end of our destination. It's just the beginning. Love that. What books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? So I grew up in Russia, so in Europe. So I used to read a lot of French literature, and obviously Russian, Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy. Absolutely favorite was Alexander Dumas, Three Musketeers. Absolutely favorite. Um, Fairy Tales. Brothers Grimm, Gr- Brothers Grimm, absolutely loved them. Um, and it's always going to be a part of me. I started reading early. So when I want to center myself, I always center myself around who I was as a six-year-old girl. Because that's your, it's who you are at your core when you're this young. And I always remember all those wonderful books I was reading, fairy tales and three musketeers and hoping that my life is going to be amazing. And now I'm hoping that I can bring that joy to other people as, as I continue on my journey as well. Love that. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Brittany Brown, absolutely. Glennon Doyle, I have a journal. Um, I signed up as soon as she announced. Um, Adam Grant, um, he has a new book 
that is about is it's a, that came out or about to come out. Um, also, Ma, uh, Maxwell Gladwell, love his books. 12 or 13 years ago, my boss at the time gave me Blink. And that book was absolutely amazing because it made me realize that certain things that I was doing, trusting my intuition, was not crazy. And since then, I've read uh, Talking to Strangers and other Maxwell Gladwell books. And I resonate on a spiritual level with all those books from Adam Grant um, to Glenn and Doyle, Doyle. Doyle. Brene Brown, and so on. So those books that can help me become a better person and those authors that can help me become a better person, that's, I always, I follow them and I always know when their books are coming out and I'm pre-ordering them on Amazon. <laughs> Love that. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Same advice as I gave about writing, don't stop. Because it's very easy to start scrolling on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, any social media. It's very easy to put your PJs on, grab a cookie and sit in front of the TV. And if you give yourself goals, it doesn't have to be a, a book a week or a, um, so, but goals like I'm going to read two pages a night. What I like about Goodreads is you can go and you can set your goals on Goodreads. And setting those intentional goals can help you read. And our brain works in a very interesting way. If we don't write things or if we don't tell anyone our goals, we don't follow through. So write your goals, tell your friends, and sign up for Goodreads and set those goals. Even if you read one book every six months, by the end of the year, you read two books. In 10 years, it's 20 books. How amazing is that? Love that. So this next one you touched on, but just in case you want to add anything to it, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Just write. I'm going to steal it from Nike. Just do it. Love it. What is one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? I already mentioned that, that I'm an introvert. Because people see my social media profile, they see me speaking at industry con conferences, doing leadership talks, and seeing me so public out there, they're very surprised when I tell them I'm an introvert. And then I explain to them that there, there is a social introvert type. And there are people that teach themselves those social skills. And I am one of those people. Anyone can teach themselves, read, write, be social, be nice, be kind. So all those skills are soft skills and they can be taught. I love that. Is there anything else you would like to say or add? It's a... Um, podcast about books so I would encourage people to read read join book clubs share knowledge we are the only species on this earth that can write and read so use that skill love that Where's the best place for readers to find your book? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option? And the best place to connect with you? So the best place to connect with me would be on LinkedIn. 
Um, they can also sign up for my newsletter on the website, eugeniajordan.com. I have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. So where they're comfortable in connecting with me, because I know some people on Twitter, com more comfortable on Twitter. I'm on all those channels. So find, find me on the channel that works for you. Love that. And where can they find your books and do you offer signed copies? So they can find the my um, book on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And for every purchased copy, I donate a copy to organizations that help underrepresented and leadership women, people of color and immigrants to grow into today's or tomorrow's leaders, organizations that empower women, people of color and um, immigrants. So, um, and this year alone, the book just got published in June, I've shipped over 500 copies. So people that find my book, they are making difference. Sign copies, um, you can send me an email via my website and I can send you a signed copy. So um, I would love that. I, I've been um, actually bringing to all my speaking engagements, I bring books and then I give, give them sign to people like me. So yes, if you're a young woman or if you're um, a supporter and ally and you want to sign copy, please reach out. Would love that. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we got to interview you. We'll be sure to drop those links in the show notes. And again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Courtney. Thank you.